Hey everybody! And a warm welcome to a new story. Today's Reddit story is called Pyramid Scheme Scammer Ends Up Paying in the End. From the Reddit Pro Revenge subreddit. I hope you like it and will enjoy the time. If you like my content and this kind of videos, please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. As always this story is told from the original writer's point of view. The link is down below in the description. Enjoy it. Throw away as this might not make me very popular, even in pro revenge. About six or seven years ago, I was trying to enlist into the military. I ended up not joining but that's a story for another time. At this point, I was led to believe I was about four months away from leaving for boot camp. I was running out of savings, and needing a part-time job for some spending cash while I waited around. So I did what any enterprising 20-something would do, and searched Craigslist for jobs. I normally hate sales jobs, especially those based on commissions, but figured it would be a great way to earn some extra cash short term. Found a few job listings that looked promising, and put out some applications. A few days later I received a call from Daniel. He was opening up a new store and needed associates. He liked my resume and asked if I'd be available for an interview on Friday morning. I was very upfront with him, and let him know that the distance was a bit more than I'd normally drive for a retail job, and asked what he was offering for an hourly rate, to see if it was worth the drive. He told me that they were planning on offering an hourly rate in the mid-teens, along with commission. Seemed like an okay deal, so I agreed to be there Friday at 8am. Friday arrives as a cold rainy day. I wear a nice shirt and tie, and drive in heavy traffic to the address Daniel provided. I knew the area from a previous job, and eventually found the strip mall I was looking for. However, I'm not seeing any signage for the company name that was listed. There is however, one empty space with no signage and two people inside. Okay, maybe they haven't gotten the store set up yet. No big deal. I had arrived early, knowing how bad traffic can be in that area. While in my car, I witnessed a young lady in business casual dress remove a sign from the window stating, retail space for rent. Call 1-800-BLAH-BLAH. -blah. Okay, a little weird but maybe it's the first day in space. I walk in about 5 minutes early, and immediately my BS meter goes from yellow to the highest level, black watch plaid. The tables are all simple plastic folding tables. The kind college kids would buy for beer pong while on a shopping trip to Target. The walls are plastered with laminated charts featuring tons of dollar signs, smiling faces from stock photos, and an organizational chart showing an all to familiar shape. A pyramid. God damn it. Alright, might as well have fun for a while to wait out traffic going home. The young lady in the dress approaches me, introducing herself as Cindy. She welcomed me to company name, and asked me to have a seat. She sat at her desk, another plastic table, and pretended to go through paperwork. However she was really just shuffling papers around. We get to chatting, and I ask her how long she's worked for Daniel. She says she's been his secretary for about six months and that I'm going to love it here. Eventually, a guy walks out of the back office. Early thirties, clean cut, wearing an ill-fitting suit from junk pennies. As he is walking over, all smiles, Cindy says, Oh, Dennis. Our newest recruit is here. The guy stops in his tracks and gives her a cold stare. It's Daniel, Cindy. We've been over this. He turns back to me and gives me his brightest, hard to find good help these days, smile, Daniel sits me down and welcomes me, saying they are going to start with a group interview and has me sit down in a circle of chairs. Eventually more people come in and sit down, Daniel gets up and begins to thank us all for coming. He tells us about an exciting new opportunity from Cutco. He pulls out a set of knives, and explains how with his company we can make as much money as we want, all while setting our own hours. He even pulls out a textbook, saying about how this company's revolutionary tactics have even been featured in college textbooks. He opened to a page, his hand covering parts of it, making sure we can all clearly see the words C-U-T-C-O in large letters on the page. Sad to say, a lot of the other interviewees were very impressed by this. One pregnant girl seemed very excited that she could work around her pregnancy and upcoming birth. Daniel was going on and on about how much money he's made and how hard workers will rise to the top quickly. At this point, Daniel said he needed to take a quick phone call and gave us five minutes to have some coffee, chit chat, whatever. As he stepped away, he left his college textbook behind. Oops. So I pick it up, find the earmarked page, and read. 
As I thought, it was all about pyramid schemes and it had Cutco as one of the largest examples. It goes on to talk about how these are essentially scams, not economically viable, etc. etc. So I have decided to share this with the group. I explain how pyramid schemes work, and how he's just scamming us. They seemed incredulous, so I said when Daniel gets back, to ask them about what we need to pay to get started. That finally got everyone to realize what was going on. Daniel walks in a few minutes later, and one of the girls in the group asked Daniel what we need to get started. Well, all you need is your first set of knives to demonstrate. You can sell that on directly or have them order one and keep that as your demo kit. Doesn't matter. Just have to pay the start-up fees for it. And that's when all hell broke loose. One kid started to get up and tell him to go to himself, saying he's wasting our time and he's in a hole for trying to pull this shit. The pregnant girl is crying because she thought she found a place that would allow her to work despite being pregnant. Daniel is clearly confused and flustered, and asking who told them all this. When it becomes apparent I'm the wrench in the machine, Daniel gets upset and starts telling me to leave. People are yelling at Daniel, Daniel is yelling at me, Cindy is trying to tell everyone she never met Daniel before today and didn't know what this bullshit was. Eventually we all walk out leaving Daniel behind. As I'm walking to the door, I see, leaning against the wall, the sign that was in the window before, retail space for rent. Call 1-800-blah-blah. As I get into my car I dial the number. Eventually I get through to a person, and ask about the property for rent at the location of Daniel's company. The nice lady on the phone apologized, saying they had just leased that property out. I asked if she knew how long the lease was for, as I was really interested in the property. She said she wasn't sure, they hadn't done the official paperwork yet. They were on their way to the space to sign everything with the leaseholder in a few hours. I told her everything that had just happened to me, and about Daniel using the space for a pyramid scheme. She got extremely upset, saying that this stuff happens all the time in the industry. They will go to sign and last minute the leaseholder will decide to opt out, after using it for some fly-by-night operation. She thanked me for the info, and I thought that was the end of that. Or so I thought. A few weeks later, I received an email from Daniel. Telling me how I ruined his life. About how the property management found out what was going on, and weren't refunding his down payment on the space. Saying he violated a clause in the paperwork he signed to hold the property. How he knew I was the one who called because I'm a terrible human being, etc etc now he was out thousands for the space and supplies, how he only wanted to give us jobs and help us. It was a long, very angry email, with several things said about me and my mother. So I called 1800 blah blah again, spoke with the same lady I did before, and she was very interested in an email from Daniel where he essentially admitted to what he was trying to do. Said it would help them all in the legal proceedings. And don't you know I was more than happy to send that email along to her. Her lawyer said it should be an open and shut case at that point. I like to think I'm a helper. If you like the story and the content, please leave a like, subscribe and share this video. Also have a look into my playlist for more entertaining stories. Thank you and have a nice day.